Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about encapsulation. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, hi Frederick, why is it that I keep on hearing that encapsulation is good? Why not just make all fields public? Well, that is a good question. And it touches on something that you don't really think so much about in the early days and you forget it in your philosophy stage and you re-remember re it uh, when you become a master level programmer or a, uh, a, pragmat a pragmatist and that is simplicity and surface so let me explain that a little bit uh, you may not have thought about it so much, but the thing that a person, if you are a consumer of something, what you want is to be able to do the thing that you are trying to accomplish in the simplest possible way. As an example, no one wants to have, like that's actually how it used to be, if you, if you go back and some systems are still like that, no one wants these high configuration super systems that has a million features but you only use three of them what we're moving towards is cleaner designs cleaner ux simplification elegance things like that it's one of the things say the apple phones were like i would say that apple has done that fairly well the the goal for them is to try to create things that are elegant and simple to use. It's the same thing with your coffee maker or if it's a fire extinguisher or whatever. If you make something complicated, it's less I, it, it makes it harder for the consumer. And encapsulation, you can think of it as the same thing. The reason why encapsulation is good is because and that's also why in programming languages such as say Java, it's a good practice or many consider it to be a good practice to keep fields private by default because it simplifies the interface of the object that you are dealing with. Now sometimes it absolutely comes to the case where well actually you have something that is now private but it should be public and if you think about that conceptually it's actually better for you in a sense to as a maintainer of say this class to start private and then go public with the thing. The reason being that if you never need to make it public, there's no egg, then you're actually sort of exposing something that has no reason to be exposed. And that has a dangerous part with it. One part is, as I said, like it actually reduces the usability of the class or the object that you have an instance of because you have more options to pick from, even though you don't need them. And so when you make it public, you open it up, but then you have a concrete use case, which means that the use case for this thing, this object that you have created or this class has actually grown. Now, this touches on surface area. And surface area, basically what the idea behind it is that when you create an interface, it doesn't matter if it's a class or if it's a function with parameters or if it's uh, like an entire system, an API or a dashboard or whatever. The more features you have, and the people from PHP will know this painfully well, the more stuff you have uh, to pick from, the likelier it is that someone is going to start depending on the thing that you have created, even though it might not be the best thing. And this is, as I like to call it, it's a dependency. And dependencies are bad for the maintainers of the system. So it is usually in your best interest to keep the interfaces as small as possible because the less stuff that is going on, the less options you have, the easier testing becomes, the less likely it is that a consumer is going to misuse or get confused or start using things in a weird way or so forth. So you really want, and it's similar to big programming languages like say Scala versus small programming languages like Go or similar things where 
the it's a different philosophy. Scala goes for maximum empowerment, and one of the main reasons why that is difficult for them is because, or difficult for the language, is because there's simply so many options. There's so many ways of doing things that it confuses a lot of new new people. Go goes the other route where you have a minimalistic programming language to try to keep things as simple as possible, which means that adoption is usually easier. It's it's a balancing act if that makes sense because the more and that's usually how these things kind of get out of control where you have these large super systems that where the business part of a company such as Facebook or Salesforce or sim or something something like that they want maximum feature amounts usually because they want to be able to cater to the widest audience possible but they do so usually at the cost of the usability of the user and so by you making the fields public you are sort of putting yourself in the same situation so an example would be if everything is public and you might have some methods that you would like to change at some point well all of a sudden you now have to go and check all the methods on your f on your class to see if they're being used in some way and then it actually becomes trickier for you to just change things but had they been private and you had exposed good methods that were actually well designed with a good interface you can make all the internal adjustments you want to the class as long as you have unit tests and so that the public stuff is actually behaving as expected it gives you as the maintainer of this interface because it is an interface basically of the class uh, the freedom to make changes that you want without breaking the contract between you and the caller of the code and this is true for all things. This is why I want, like, this is sort of the epiphany that at least I got, and I hope that a lot of other software developers get it when they get to a certain level, where you start to realize that the lowest level, which is usually the code level, actually a lot of the same ideas about abstractions, functions, objects, interfaces, contracts, and so forth, these start at that lowest level and they grow up to the system level because um, if you really think about it what is the difference between a controller like a controller uh, that has routes and so forth that does something on the uh, when a web request comes in and a class with methods it's different but the philosophical theoretical principles behind it aren't all that different and the same thing goes if you have a microservices architecture with like an API gateway or so forth. Each service is basically a class, usually, depending on how you destructure it, of course. But I hope that you can see the red thread. Like this idea of creating good, clean interfaces at the class level, the same, many of the same principles. I mean, it grows, of course, in complexity the bigger the system gets, but the same thinking principles are usually very true. It's actually a fa challenge that I face at my work where people are talking about different types of APIs, and I say, well, if you're going to have a microservices ecosystem, think of it as just designing a single system. There's always a good idea to keep like a lowest level of data. If you're talking about like we're not talking about the layered architecture, to have a pure layer of data where you can just fetch the data without any extra business logic, because that way you can always trust that you can scale the system in many ways at the higher business logic level without uh, infecting or like uh, poisoning the data sources with business logic that may only make sense in one case but not in another case and the same thing is true for you as a software developer defi in defining p fields on a class think about it exactly the same way a security is the a similar a similar sort of thing the more area the more interfaces the more public stuff that you can interact with the likelier it is that something is going to be a security breach the smaller you can make things the better for you as the maintainer, the less risk you have, and that brings me to that epiphany that you usually get when uh, you become a, when you go through all this stuff. Because usually, as I said, you start out just trying to figure out things, and then you become like really, really clever, and you try to make these things more complicated than they actually have to be, and then you realize that simpler is actually better, because you 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 stop you stop having that part of you that sort of just wants to challenge yourself because you are finding this all that interesting but you're actually creating worse experiences for your customers and for even for yourself in many cases and i still go back some days guys and look at code that i wrote a few years back and i go wow well the, there is so much stuff here that could be thrown away and simplified and honestly if you think about it yourself how often do you want to use something that is needlessly complicated when you really just want to do something fairly straightforward usually 
it is the case that you just want to be able to do the thing you want, not with all this other noise around it. So what I want you to take away from this is that the reason why encapsulation is good is because the less exposure, uh, the less public exposure that you give to your classes or your APIs or whatever you're doing, and when you have an abstraction, the less likely it is that you're going to get dependencies on things that may be hard to change afterwards. It might be that it, it is usually easier security-wise. It's user-friendlier because there's less to for you to interact. Testing goes down as well because the less things that you are publicly exposing, the less testing you technically uh, uh, conceptually need to do. So less is really more. And the thing that is really the key to making this a good, uh, like a, I hope that I can drive this home, is that the things that you make public, you have to make sure that these are the things that really cover and uh, cover the use cases that you have. Because these things, as if they are public and people depend on them, these are the things that are going to be maintained. These are the things that people are going to depend on, which means that now you're sort of lock in a sense, you're locking down that in contract between your piece of the system and the rest of the system. And to make sure that that is a good contract is a very good investment for you rather than having everything public because then all of a sudden you create this really big surface where you might find that a lot of very confusing usage use cases spawn up and trust me go and ask the people who maintain like the PHP standards or JavaScript standards like all of these sorts of things guys a lot of the time these things that you want to throw away in a programming language the reason why it still exists is not because we want to keep it it's because we can't just throw it away because it's being depended upon by some someone somewhere and we don't want to break other people's code have a great day